Hi, in this video now we will be uh, learning about how to calculate or compute the uh, variance and sorry, a standard deviation and return for a portfolio of four assets. Um, we looked at the case of two assets and we tried to do three asset uh, portfolios, but we were unable to do last time. So we'll let's do four assets for now. And the, the, the principle here, the way we create the portfolios and calculate the um, mean and variance will be the same for even 40 assets. Just follow this uh, guide. Okay, so uh, here I have four assets, uh, four different uh, stocks and they return. So I kind of skipped the parts where you download and calculate the returns. These are returns. So this is Goldman Sachs, Walmart, uh, BA and Microsoft asset. Uh, stocks stock returns and then i kind of sorted this as well so the early periods at the top coming to 2016 so this is uh 10 year monthly returns i think i will kind of cut this now um let me create a next one this is too long to manage so what i'll do is i'll just copy uh copy maybe this much of it yeah i mean uh, for the demonstration right obviously so you can have as many assets as you wish as many observations as well so let's copy the format as well so that these are dates not some random numbers yeah so let's copy this format into the next one done right next okay so we have the returns and as you know with the modern portfolio theory we will be dealing with um, we'll be we have to calculate correlation um, co in other words, variance covariance matrix. In this case, it's basically four assets, so better to do a matrix algebra approach. And also, we will have to uh, calculate variances and uh, kind of average values of each stock. So let's do this now. So let's copy this, copy, and uh, maybe I'll just carry on in a vertical fashion so this will be easier so let's go and do this then let's type average here average return and it will then be uh, average of each of these so this is the average return uh, this is the for example this is for this period if it's a holding period this would be the average holding period return done is negative return on average for Walmart okay next is so we now that uh, got the average returns now we need to calculate variance covariance uh, matrix for that we need to we'll do a manual approach this is a bit harder but it's 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 interesting so what we need to do is now if I if I just build this intuition rather than just doing this uh, I mean I will I will kind of show you what we're doing at each step so at this okay let's say one button i don't know what it is got it okay done it okay so the uh portfolio standard deviation or in this case we want to calculate standard deviation with each each uh each stock uh that will be sigma the usual formula uh square root of sum of the deviations from mean of each observation squared over n minus 1 and this goes from i equal to 1 to n depending on n observations right so we will now calculate uh, this uh, use this formula to calculate standard deviations or variances in this case for example uh, so we will first do this this expression inside the bracket so xi minus x bar now if I go back to my Excel as you can see uh, this is my X bar these are X bars for each stock and these are X I's I1 I2 so basically X1 X2 so these are return first period second period so so on so forth and 35th period yeah 35th observation so let me copy this first copy just to be consistent paste with the formula now equal so as you remember it was x i minus x bar and let's kind of lock the x bar to this 
fix it to this cell so you highlight and press F4 or just put dollar signs uh, because I want to sort of copy the formula into the next column I delete the dollar bar from in front of B because you know when you kind of drag this cell into the next one I will copy this in formula into C and D it allows me to copy basically you will see what okay uh, this is a deviation from mean for this period and just double click here done next you just copy the formula yeah so this only works if if you leave I mean if you delete the dollar sign here in front of the letter because we don't have to fix the column but just the just the row so that next one also fixed to this yeah it, we have absolute referencing here in this case so this is basically what we did is this part inside the bracket yeah this is what we did we've done now we need to square them and take the sum so what happens then for that we will use matrix algebra and that is gonna be this um, we have how many assets here one two three four assets yeah four assets four assets so this will be four by four matrix right so I'm going to create the what you call up oh, don't cut it variance covariance matrix for this combination of assets so copy paste it here spatial paste transpose so we have the four assets kind of thing right next thing um, we can we can I guess start now so what you do is once you copy this uh, into columns and rows the names of the names of the stocks so maybe I'll kind of no I'll leave it okay now highlight the area where the variance covariance matrix will be pasted and go here and then equal equal and type matrix multiplication so that's m m u l t so you can double click here and transpose the first selection so double click again if you want for some reason it's not working but i'll leave it then because i already have done typing okay ah. right now close the bracket i guess comma then copy this again one more time close the bracket now last bracket yeah now at this point we finished uh, inputting all what we need but now before we finish calculations computations you have to basically press control shift enter and let's see what happened yeah this is our variance covariance matrix what we have in this case is basically if we basically what we do is if we basically divide everything if we divide everything by uh, n minus 1 which is this thing here n minus 1 we will be getting the variance covariance matrix yeah so um, what we do is we'll just highlight this close the brackets and divide n minus 1 n is the number of observations so here is it is 35 returns 35 dates now if you have a long data set then it will be good to, to, to just use formula called count it just counts the rows yeah it counts number of elements and minus 1 and close the bracket now and do the same control shift enter here it is now the elements on the diagonal are the variances of each stock so it's basically GS to GS here is showing you this this is variance of returns of Goldman Sachs so I can I can show you what it is basically if I if I come here and then say var and highlight this and enter so this is 0, 0.0 0 0.0165 0 0.0165 exactly the same thing so you can do the same and then see what Walmart yeah Walmart value is 0 0.002 that's exactly the same so these are variances 
So what I did here is basically, um, if you remember, portfolio variance formula. So this is for a stock. Um, for portfolio variance, sorry, nice one, uh, P. If you remember, it was uh, sigma of first stock square. So this is the variance times the weight into the weight of or the fraction of cash we put in 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 one in the first uh, asset plus a second stock variance times so this is squared here as well w2 squared as well so this is two asset case because the other three asset case will be complicated with too many covariances the covariance between uh, x1 and x2 x2 and x1 being the returns and and this will be weight one weight two so as you can see um what, what we've done for now is we've calculated this this for now um, but this is a two asset case if it was three we would have the four of these as three of these sigma squares and w's plus covariance of each asset with each other i mean uh, uh what you call this paired covariance obviously you, don't, you can't have covariance of at the same time four assets so it will be x1 to x2 x1 to x3 x2 to x4 so x3 so this will be three different combinations yeah so but this is a simple case so this thing here is the covariance as well so this is what we are looking at here so while while these are variances of each asset four of this yeah but these are basically covariance these off diagonal elements are covariance so covariance between Goldman Sachs returns and Walmart is this, so it's a positive covariance, so we can expect positive correlation. Covariance between Goldman Sachs and BA is this, so this is again positive. Covariance between Microsoft and Goldman Sachs is this, so this is positive, this is a negative one here. So these are exactly the same as this, as you can see, so this is a mirror image. So it's a key point is that this is variance covariance matrix. Because we will have a lot of elements here, if you have N assets, it will be N of this. Yeah, this, there will be a lot of them, basically n minus one, sorry, n minus of them. So if you um, imagine hundred months, then this will be hundred assets. There will be hundreds of them. So uh, to avoid a lot of computation, we we just used uh, matrix algebra to aid us. Next thing, okay, we've done this. Next thing is let's calculate now average returns from this portfolio. How do we do that? Average return from this portfolio. Um, one thing is we need to decide how much we want to invest in each of these assets first of all so this would be the uh, uh, fractions of assets yeah how much to invest maybe I'll do that in the next video this is going to be a lot long so if you watch this if you just watch this um, if you do just watch this and then do the covariance up to this point then go to the next video, it's approaching 15 minutes, so uh, it's 13 something. So I'll, in, in the next video, I will just show you how to do, uh, how to calculate the, uh, um, what do you call this, portfolio uh, return and portfolio standard deviation. So it will, it will be a shorter video rather than longer. See you in a bit.